Yeshiva World. This gentleman just said that the learning Torah is supposed to stand, but the rabbi said this isn't just learning Torah, it's welcoming people in the house, like the patriarch Abraham. And when you do that, you give them a seat, you don't make them stand. It'll only be about 10 minutes, the whole discourse in time. So is he coming to Shalim from America? Several years ago, a question came from America. There's a fellow, a wealthy Jew, that fell onto the subway tracks. There's a tunnel, and the subway runs, and he fell onto the subway tracks. And here the, 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 uh, the train is blowing its horn. And it's a terrifying situation. He's in the tunnel. He's on the tracks. On the all people are saying it's terrible. Three a few more seconds and God forbid he'll be alive. He'll be killed. He banged his head and he had no strength to get off the tracks. In Mitten, come to Europa Kushi. A black African American can. A person like six foot eight and a half inches. <laughs> Very large gentleman. He jumped into the strings. And he pulled him out. And he, they both jumped back onto the platform. One more second, they both would have been killed by the train. In America, there are such itonaim. Yet a place there are itonaim. A lot of reporters all over the place, constantly in the United States. The kushi at the movie game, but my wife is still not not at the place. And the reason I'm staying to try to see the hagiber. The black fellow picked him off the tracks, put him on the platform, and everyone's screaming, "This is a warrior, a hero, a hero, a powerful person." See, you come in the band. And the African American got onto the subway train, put one foot on top of the other foot, and he went to sleep. He reported this to you. He did an incredible thing. He saved a human being's life. He says, you're confusing me. I'm a dishwasher in a restaurant. I wash the dishes. 200 people came for a party in the restaurant. I didn't have enough time to wash all the dishes. 
Ich krieg 10 Dollar für eine Stunde. I get 10 dollars an hour getting paid washing dishes. Ich stehe da in die Bahn, weil ich da vor in der Restaurant. So I stood there at the train stop because I have to run to the restaurant. Wenn der Mensch wollte gar nicht in die Woche, wollte ich mit die Bahn auch hinkommen, es wäre schon später. He says, if this guy got killed, then the train would have arrived at my stop two hours late. Wollte ich verloren 20 Dollar. I would have lost 20 dollars in the transaction. Komm mal rum, ich schwebe. Ob er los mir auf, ich darf jetzt gar nicht sein, wenn er kommt bald 20, kommt nur 200 Teller, so ist es wahrscheinlich. He says, so, I pulled him out to get the 20 dollars worth of my pay that I would have lost. Let me just go to sleep now. I got a lot of dishes to wash when I get there. Too much dishes. Leave me alone with your questions. So, I'm going to go to sleep. They told him you're a hero. So to me, you're a giver. You wash dinners, but I'm a dishwasher. I'm not a hero. And now, so to speak, he's still there, but the ganze Bad is not going to be there. She lost me up. And it's really bothering me the whole confusion. Just leave me alone. Enough with the story. She, there are men who sit in the front and they get dressed. Wenn er mit mir da aufstellt, oh eben, gebe ich mir hunderttausend Dollar. He says that the fellow who was on the tracks for a few seconds thought, if anybody saves my life, I'll give him one hundred thousand dollars. Aber der Kuschi hat doch gar nicht gemeint mehr. But this fellow wasn't doing it to save him. Er hat auf seine 20 Dollar dafür. He was just looking for 20 dollars, that he would be messed up to two hours, we'd come late because they'd have to move the body to the tracks. Und dann muss ich nicht verscheiden, zu dafür nehmen, als er kommt, als er tut. Er gibt hunderttausend Dollar oder nicht. So he is the Shiloh of the Rav because of Akaras Hatay, being indebted and thankful to the fellow because he have to give him a hundred thousand dollars for his twenty dollars enough. The guy thought he was just making twenty dollars. He thought to give a hundred thousand. So the question is, is there Akaras Hatay, the concept of Judaism, we're always thankful to people who are doing things for us, does he have to pay a hundred thousand dollars? Because he committed, that's what he would give. Wie stark ist der Kurs der Teuf in die Teure? The Rav wants to preface by introducing the subject and saying, how powerful and important is the concept of being grateful, der Kurs der Teuf, recognizing the good odds of Teuf für ihn. Es ist gewesen, dass ich in der Erzis Roel, was ein Geboren war, ein Klinkin, und ich darf doch mal Briss. There was a child born in Israel that needed a Briss, a circumcision. Der, der Tate von dem Mingel und Gott mechabet seinem Roschkeul in seinem. So the father of the child wanted to honor the Rosh Kolim Zayin, the Moel or the Sandek? The Sandek. So he wanted to honor him to be the Sandek. The Sandek is a very huge honor that you hold the baby at the time of the circumcision. And this honor is something that promises wealth to the individual who has the baby. He's very thankful to the Rosh Kolim. You boys know what it's called. This fellow is still learning the entire day. So Rosh Kolim, like the Rosh Hashiva, like the Rav, has also a Kolim Chulam. He's also Rosh Kolim, besides being a Rav. It's a tremendous responsibility to raise money and to pay the stipends and the salaries of the fellows are learning Kolim. So this Kolim fellow who had the baby had tremendous gratitude and a Korosat of thankfulness to the Rosh Kolim for taking care of him, for providing for him, for supporting him, encouraging him. Or for the Tzvete side, we don't have them God Lador, we don't. But on the other hand, he wanted the God Lador, the fellow of God Lador. He wanted the God Lador. So the Rav said that on the other hand, he wanted to give the God Lador, the great Torah giant, of Chaim Kanievsky, his brother-in-law, you should know it's an incredible thing, I shouldn't be saying this, but this Rav is a tremendous Talmud Chacham. You should hear when he sits yes. with Rav Chaim, he treats him as if he's his Rebbe. He calls him the Rav. When he, when he answers questions, he defers to him as if he's his young student. Okay, we'll continue. There's nothing that could be better for the child than to have the God in that door, the great Torah jar in the time holding the baby at the time of the circumcision. On the other hand, he has tremendous gratitude to the Rosh Kail, the head of his yeshiva that's providing for him. So he asked the Rav, who should he give son the Kail? So, the Rav's father-in-law, like Benjamin told you, is the Godel Hadar, the Pesach Hadar, 
Maron of Hayashev, Zechet Tzadik Levrach, who was passed away a few years ago. He lived to 103. He was only Torah. He only knew from Torah. So he asked his father-in-law, what should he do? Should he advise him to give it to his brother-in-law or to give it to the Rosh Kel? <laughs> <laughs> Stand up, Stefanski, because that's in Levin the Rav. The Rav Eliashi was the answer to The Rosh Hashiva, the Rav, Rav Eliashi, his father, my answer as follows. The little child would be asking me this eight-day-old child asked me the question. Question, no question, give it to the God Lador. He's not asking me the question, as far as asking the question. It's an incredible thing, halachically, halachically now. The father is asking the question. And the father has an obligation of Hakkos It's not just a nice thing to do because I want to be nice to someone who was nice to me. A Rosh Kail provides for a curling man, gives him a stipend, takes care of him emotionally, physically. You're obligated to honor him. You're obligated to give him recognition. So it's not just the child asking the question. In other words, the reality is the child should have the God of Because what could be better than Rabchaim Kanievsky? But because the father is asking the question, the father has an obligation in Hakkar Satoiv. So the Rav is saying a tremendous chiddish from his illustrious father, Rav Yashem. You people don't even understand what's going on over there. Because Rav Yashem was the God of Lador. And he's basking and giving the Santa Coyas to the God of Lador, his son in law. And the brother in law is referring to the. You guys don't know what's going on. But anyway, the bottom line is is that the Rav said. That there's a concept called obligation of Hakara A Jew doesn't just say thank you, you're obligated to say thank you. And that beats out everything else. Yeah. Rabbi Yashiv, there wasn't a lot of discussion. He was a son in law, beloved son in law, by the way. There was no discussion. You spoke a minute and it's over. You didn't go ahead and discuss the issue afterwards. So the Rabbi is questioning the son in law what is the source, the biblical source, the halachic source, for such an obligation of Hakara Satay. He says, the Rav says that the Makor that he figures out, why Rav Yashif said, Listen, boys, when you get married to what he's saying. The Rav, the Rav, the Rav, he didn't discuss Rav Yashif. He is figuring it out. That's what he said. Rav Yashif has no time to discuss it. So he's now listening to The boys got willing to marry nice Jewish girls. You'll marry great girls. We'll have you sit and learn the rest of your lives. Listen to this. A person has an obligation to honor his wife. That's what the Gemara in Yuvamis says. The tractate that deals with Yuvamis, your husband dies, and you have to figure out a way to take your beloved wife, the marriage. You're obligated to honor your wife. You've got to love your wife like you love yourself. That's a lot of loving. But when it comes to honoring your wife, even more than yourself. You love your wife like you love yourself. But when it comes to honoring your wife, and we like a lot of honor, you got to honor your wife even more. <coughs> what is the Gemara has this, this, this message? Where do you get this maxim, idiom? What do you learn it from? The Torah says that it's not good for man to be himself. That's what... Hashem said in Bereshis when they created man, when they created wife, Chava. It's not good for a person to be without a wife. So therefore, because your wife is making you, you are now indebted to your wife. It's not just that you have to say thank you. You're a Baal Chayv. When you owe somebody a thousand dollars, you're a Baal Chayv, you're indebted. When you marry a girl, you are indebted to her. 
אם ממילא זה הבעל חייב מוזר אירו בגלל כובד, מר וער וילם זולם בו בגלל כובד. So when you're a בעל חייב, that means you're in debt. You do something to someone else. You have to show them honor and glory because they have something over you. It's like somebody owes you, you owe somebody $5,000. So you honor that person because you're in debt to him. So they're up saying that when you have a wife who you're married to, you are in her debt. So you have to honor her even more than you honor yourself. אז יש לידי אישה לוחה, אז קום את יום טב, הוא נאמן שהוא סקייף מהבגד, הוא נראות גלט עוד אלפה זיר ציקויפים, עוד אלפה דפרוי. קומס יום טב, יש לנו אבליגציה לסלברט. ואחד מהדברים של סלברט זה לבוא 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 to do it for your wife. Because you're obligated to her. Well, since you're obligated to her, you're obligated to buy it for her, more than for yourself. Buster Torah tells us that Yosef, when he was the viceroy of Egypt, freed all of the... The, the priests, the priests of the Egyptian Empire, the priests to pagan gods from paying any taxes. So the Rishon in Favos, and when the Pertifas, Froy, or Tempa Shudik, they come with the Galochim, or the Gizok, as the Om Reyes, as the Zaligner, see the Shlemes. The, the chief warden of prison's wife, Potiphar, accused Yosef of immorality, of trying to have his way with her. And all of the priests of Egypt <coughs> came and brought proofs that it wasn't so. But Yosef Gizok, I have been pushed at the Balchoyim Zerah. Kol zman ich lev et kid ein koimer nishdaf and tzolot kishtoyot. So Yosef HaTzadik, who was a Jew, who did not believe in priests of false gods, said, as long as I'm alive, I'm indebted to them. But um, he said that, that oh, as long as I'm alive, I am indebted to all the priests. They'll never pay taxes in my day. So you have 100 reyes, and you have 100 reyes, 100 reyes, you know. But you know that the Torah, the one who is the second, has the same thing, not the same thing, not the same thing. The rabbi says he has over a hundred proofs that if somebody receives a favor from someone else, he's obligated and in his debt to take care of that person. <laughs> so the rabbi said in our original case, remember about two hours ago, that original case, and the fellow that fell on the tracks, so that fellow... Because he promised $100,000, he can get by with $30,000. But he's got to pay this African-American fellow $30,000. Favos, out of Jivot, I'm right to them. Or they got 20, 200 tellers out of the guy. Or the tellers out of the guy, but right to them. So the rabbi says, because he really wanted to save this guy's life. He was trying to save those 200 dishes that he had to wash. So his intention wasn't necessarily to save his life, but just basically to, to clean, wash his dishes on time. What's that? What's that? ‫-שתוקים <laughs> 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 Jonas asked the following question. He asked, this is generally how Torah studies get developed, and we're understanding it better now. He asked the question of the rub. Who cares what the African-American's intention was? You have an obligation of a course. I'll tell you, if you saved your life. 
So the Rav said that Meika Adin, Kavana doesn't mean anything. There's no obligation because you have a thought process to do something. He didn't make a neder, he didn't make a vow, he didn't obligate himself. But inherently, there's a concept of a Karasa type. But he says, go to the mindset of the African American. <clears throat> he wasn't interested in saving his life. It wasn't like you're indebted to him for saving his life. He didn't save your life. He saved the two hours of a delay when you're going to be crushed under the train, and he's going to come late for washing the dishes. He doesn't see a life, he sees dishes. So therefore, the chorus I tell you is when somebody does something for you. He didn't do anything for you, he did it for the dishes. But still, because of the fact, the Rav felt that there was this intention of paying the fellow who saves him money, give him 30000 <laughs> why, why is the Makshava Chal? No, 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 that's what the Rav was saying. That's what the Rav is saying. It's not an Eda. Makshava from the Jewish guy. No, because it's not Chal. That's what the Rav is saying. This is Kamilus to Hasidus. And there was no Neda. If he said, I make a Neda, he's lying on the tracks. I make a Neda. Whoever saves me is $100,000. I'll just show a Neda. He didn't make a Neda. So therefore, So that's Chal. So that's Chal. So that's the Rav. If somebody walks in, it's like, you know, you say to yourself, okay, $10,000. That's a, that's a shnickel, that's a shnickel yeah. shayla. Because sometimes if you have a component to maybe give somebody yeah. the uh, garments where it's stuck, it could be there's a shnickel shayla. Like you see somebody. But it says a matonid. 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 No. There's an Indian of that. That the person has in mind. Machshava matonid. A matonid. A right? Yeah. I understand that, could, that if a person says, oh, you know, I'm going to give... Because if it's so overwhelming, but normally speaking, you should know, if you see a Mishulach and you tend to give him a dollar, you may have to run after him to give him the dollar. That's, 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 that's a question. I'm, I'm saying that. I said, it's a Shailah. I'm not saying it's a cloth. Then he fragged an under Shailah. Fragged as, B'chlal libsa machshava, efshaz amachshava teva zevit stokeh. disagreed. Said he feels that that Jew was on the tracks with the African American getting the shayla. Jew was on tracks. He's about to be run over by a train. He says, whoever saves my life, $100,000. An African-American guy was a dishwasher and is rushing to business. He says, I'll save this guy's life because or else $20 I'll lose because I get paid $10 an hour. So I'm not looking to save the guy's life. I'm looking just to save $20 because if I come two hours late to get the mangled body under the train, I'm not going to be able to get to my job on time. That was the Shiloh. So the question is, is he going to give $100,000? So Rav Paskin, $30,000. Because of the fact that it's hakaras atoyv, but this real no, it's chayvus. His chayvus hakaras atoyv. This guy didn't want to do anything for you to save your life. He just wanted to save his twenty dollars washing the dishes. But now he just said that uh, his brother-in-law, Rav Chaim Kanievsky, says he should give the entire hundred thousand dollars. Explain why. How does Rav Chaim know this? The Gemara says that Amos's grandchild learned Torah in Bnei Brak. Amos, Haman's children. Amos's grandchildren learned Torah in Haman. Amos, Amos, Haman, 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 Harosha, who got hung on the tree. Amen. Haman, his grandchildren were sitting and learning Torah in Bnei Brak. The night of the Sabbath. Where he does? Who are these fellows? Rabbi Kiva. The legendary Rabbi Kiva was a grandson, because Rabbi Kiva's father was a ger, a grandson of Haman who came from Amalek. We had Haman in Russia try to kill all the Jews. Another two months we're going to go clap Haman. You know, we hear Haman's name with the Gragor or the bang of foot. And his grandson should be Rabbi Kiva that the whole Torah could be given to him. How could it be that Haman in Russia, this evil Haman, this despot, his grandchild should be Rabbi Kiva? And look here. So it's what the Magid we do in the Mitamoshi. It's what the Razoi. It says, given a Kenik. Was a cook the voice from the fenster? Kitra cook as a kind. Was a kind of a person in Alts, a bin from a from a off, so from a fish, on a host, host, on a can't strap the bottom. A can't strap is a voice, a lot of gas a voice. The Dubna Market says a story of a king, a parable of a king who's looking out of his window and he sees that his own child. 
had swallowed the bone of either a chicken or a piece of fish, <coughs> and he was Gas wheezing gasping. and gasping and coughing, and he couldn't get it out. And the father's looking at his child as he's suffocating. A king like a king get kneplach from gold with Berlin. A king's child wears garments that have both gold and diamond buttons. Is it coming a murder? And they said to him, "Can you get an angel? I can't stop them. When they get into a club, I fall in them." So there came a murderer who liked those gold buttons and diamonds. And he saw how the king's child was suffocating, was, you know, choking. So he gave him as a whack on the back of his neck, of an upper Heimlich maneuver on the back of his neck to, to clap him, to kill him. The So he said if, his intention was when he kills the kid, he'll get his jacket, his robe, and he'll have buttons that have gold and uh, diamonds. Heimlich maneuver, whacked him on the back of the neck, and, the, and he dislodged the bone from his throat. The case of us is The king saw all this. But then they grabbed the murderer. They grabbed the murderer. So the case of the murderer is going to argue that the length of a bay for 100 days. This murderer, they're going to put on a tree and hang him 150 feet up in the air. But he did save the child's life. He says, I'll take care of this guy. We're going to hang that fellow. They killed him. But his child will be a minister in my realm, in my regime. Because of Akkar Satayv. To be thankful because he saved his life. And the Akkar Satayv that was given to Haman for whacking Kali Yisrael to dislodge the Avayda Zor from their throat, I'm just extrapolating, is Rabbi Kiva. That's not correct. Haman wanted to do nice things to the Jewish people. He wanted to kill them all in one day. <coughs> but good, good, goodness, a benef, 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 a benefit came out of it. Because when the Jewish nation, the Jewish nation, saw the hand of Hashem standing in the so the Gemara Shabbos Beichel says, "Kimu bekibul Yehudim, kimu mashikibul kvar." that they received the Torah under religious coercion, the rest, the mountain was lifted above them, and now they saw the clouds parting and the rays of Hashem's salvation, they joyfully and gladly received the Torah again, but to their own volition, out of their own desire. So the Rav says, the Rav Chaim said, so what do you see from the story about Haman? Even though he wanted to exterminate the Jews like Hitler, but he wanted to do it one day, Yemach Shemai. But since a benefit came out, the Jews received the Torah gladly and joyfully, he is rewarded, Haman, with the greatest treasure that the Jewish nation ever had, the glorious Rav Akiva. Rabbi Chaim asked, what has greater value, 100,000 Shmalaras, dollars, or the great Rav Akiva? So Chaim Kanievsky Paskin, this God Lador Paskin, for this God Lador that you have to give the non-Jewish fellow, the African American, one hundred thousand dollars, the whole money belongs to him. the rabbi just said over that to strengthen what he said before was that this African American didn't have intention to save the person's life, but he did have intention to kill him. Haman had intention to kill all the Jews, and even with that intention, because something positive came out that the Jews glad, gladly received the Torah. That's a reason to repeat. So, of course, in this case, the person didn't intend to do something wrong. He's just thinking about his 200 dishes that he has to wash. That being the case, you have to give him the full amount of money. 
לא עושה לו פסק. כדי להצליח מהקלינה מייסה, לגור הקלינה. דו היא דו, התחנת דלק כבר לא טובות, מכוניות, תחנת דלק. רוב סטייז דאט איזה... That right here, there is a gas station that services cars. The cars get and fill up the gas by the gas station. He found one of the great Rosh Yeshivas from here. He found a taxi, and he found a taxi, and he found a taxi. So he's traveling with a, a taxi, they call it a special, he and his wife, his Robinson, and they're filling up the car with gas. So he said that the Robinson said something to her husband, the Rosh Hashiva, thinking that no one's hearing, but the Rav is blessed with good hearing. So the Robinson is a man. ואוסי, דאבוס פילטון דה בנזין, זה איבן אמר לישיבה, הישיבה בוכן חבר'ן, מותיר פרוג לקטם על זבוכן. אז חוסן. זוג ציין ונספור גוונדר שיטח ואותו דרגוון אפרוי הממלא בנזין. הוא נץ בנך רבצלף ונגרס לישיב פולנד. חוזר גוט איינגט ועושה רנטוורטיר. אותו רנטוורט. ואין דובוס חס הגעת מתאם, ואולטר גיבן דורות שישי בפרוטות אלו, הוא ניחו לנו מפיל בנזין. אוי אבו כי גוף אוי, חבדו איסא מגוף אוי. אבל תראו בגין קובץ מהבירות, פגוס. אבו כן זה לראשי ובין הראשי של זר רבי צמי. עוד קצת אחרי זה, ואין פורץ על הגנץ לטוב מתיקים דאר. ואין קוף, ואין פשטוף, איזה לא מאמר בוש. זה זיתו תוך הארצדים. איזה פושט חי ואירה קורס אטוי. So the Rav says this falls into the category we spoke about before that you have to honor your wife more than yourself. Who takes care of the family when the fellow is sitting and learning and giving sure who takes care of the children? Who makes sure that his suit, his kapota looks nice, is pressed, is clean? It's the wife. Without her, he'd never be able to accomplish. So he's obligated in that chorus at time. He's obligated to honor her more than he honors himself. Gitter, I hope COVID. I said COVID at the wrong time. So this is the great COVID. The rabbi couldn't believe. He was astonished that the fellow said. Those eight ogits of it. Those ogits of the chorus at time. דה ראשי וגיטל כנפרים ואפריף משתו, וגן סנטולי לישיבה, ואיתי תלמידים. אף חויות לי בזמן קום, תראה לי תראה פרוברטה, וו, רטה ותראה פרוברטה, וו, ו... הקום צלע זה יום הלך, זה יגיד להם דאס ומוזי בטן, מי ליברמן רדיש בפניה. עושר לי שאין כוח, עושר גן סנטולי ירד מתלמידים. תכבידה נשבד רעמינות. Spends the whole day learning with the Talmud. Comes home late at night. He doesn't even have time. Normally a wife likes that her husband shouldn't spend quality time with him. There's no time for that. She begs him to eat supper that he should have strength to be able to continue with Talmud. And her whole life is given over to her husband. The father, he makes zog as a posik. So that's why he could have said this verse, that if not for the fact that you were my wife, I would be... Pumping gas and he begins. On dos, That's what Hashem wants. The Rav says, and I've heard this from G'day Lomosa, when you decide the Kedushin, you got to take care of your wife. It says in the Ksuba, the marriage, marriage document, that I'm going to provide for her and clothe her. But the most important thing, Oikir. I'm going to cherish her. I'm going to hold her dear, precious. I'm going to honor her. That's what it says in the marital contract. When you sign the super, when you get married, God willing. So in it, it says this obligation to honor your wife, to hold her precious.
אז זה לך שני דיבור על פרקפולית על רב שלי. איי, איי, איי. The Rav speaking very beautifully. אני אקן לי. רוסקי בסינגלר, שאלה לי. לא מרגש. צווי. Something they know. Yeah, I'm just going to be here. 